found them what? Sleeping from sorrow. Mm. Then he said to them, Why do you sleep? Forget about that. He's talking to disciples. Some disciples sleep in the church also. <laughs> They've not prayed. They've slept the whole night in the church also. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> You know, one time in a congregation, it's a real story. One man was sleeping. <laughs> right? And a fly was coming and disturbing him. Go ahead again, go to sleep. And this pastor is giving a fiery message. And pastor is getting irritated with this one man out of all the congregation. Can you imagine? The pastor is also so stewed. The catch only that one person who is sitting or sleeping. The eyes will not fall to all the ones whose eyes are open. The eyes will only fall to the one who is... And so he was like, you know... So you know what happened? Pastor got angry. Who wants to go to hell? This man, you know, from sleep got up and prayed. Everyone was sitting, everyone was laughing. So you know what he said? Smart disciples, you see. Pastor, I know one thing. Only you and me are standing in this congregation. <laughs> are you with me? So disciples are smart. So Jesus came to this disciples and he said, Why do you sleep? Rise up and pray, lest you enter into temptation. <laughs> My people of God, the time has come that we will pray, we will press on towards the goal that God has set before us because it's the time that God wants us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. God wants us to take us through. You know, there's a journey. Out of exodus into victory, God wants you to see you blessed. God wants to turn your captivity, but in your strength you will fail. But in the strength of the Almighty Savior, you will prevail. That's the promise of the living God. And therefore, we need the help of the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, we cannot say no to sin. In your strength, you will keep succumbing to the same sin again and again and again. But in His strength, you will overcome. You will walk a victorious life because then you will have the helper, you will have the comforter. And that's why the Feast of Pentecost is so important. After the Exodus, what happened to the people of Israel? They came into the wilderness for 40 years. The journey technically was only for 14 days. But it took them 40 years. Why? Of one sin. That was what? Complaint, murmuring, mourning. Not being grateful. When the Lord has brought us out from Egypt, don't cry for the onions and the garlics of Egypt. But be satisfied with the manna that He feeds you with in your walk of life and blesses you so that you can be in His presence. Mind you, His purpose is to have fellowship with you around the clock. That's why He had made man. Every evening God would come down and commune with Adam and Eve. Every day. That's His original purpose. And God is taking the church out of the exodus into the victory through the wilderness with the help of the Holy Spirit that one day we will enter into our tabernacles. This was the season of the Pentecost where we can enter into the Holy of Holies with the help of the Holy Spirit. We will be made holy and we can enter into the Holy and Holies and worship the Lord the way we had never worshipped Him before. And He will worship how? Boot or no boot, praise the Lord. Job or no job, praise the Lord. Money or no money, praise the Lord. Transport or no transport, praise the Lord. Snacks after church or no snacks, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you with me? And that has to be a condition with our life that when we have the Holy Ghost, there will be always praises. There will be always thanksgiving. And that will take you to a place out of the seven feasts of the Lord, four feasts were fulfilled in Jesus Christ when He came. Now, what were the four feasts that were fulfilled? The Passover, that is the redemption. The unleavened bread that typifies our justification and sanctification. Number three is the first fruits that was fulfilled in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And number four, so these three were fulfilled at the cross. And then the fourth, then God has brought the church into the Holy of Holies by pouring out His Holy Spirit. 
And what he has done, the Pentecost is fulfilled when Christ has sent the Holy Ghost upon us. And we worship him round the clock and praise his holy name. And the time is soon coming. Pentecost is a time where the harvest of the church has begun. And we are still in a process of being harvested. That's what is the Pentecost all about. The harvest is on. And the, the, the you know, the, the sickle is being put and people are being coming in big numbers into the house of God. That's what is Pentecost doing to the church worldwide today. But soon, the three feasts are going to be fulfilled. The feast of the trumpets, the trumpet will be blown. Jesus will come. The day of atonement and the tabernacles. Ah. All these three are to be fulfilled. And very soon, this Holy Ghost who has come upon us will take us to the place of tabernacles. That when the trumpet will sound and we will all be taken up into glory together with Jesus and will reign on this earth for a thousand years. That's the time the tabernacle will be fulfilled where we will reign with Jesus one thousand years on this earth praising and glorifying the name of the living God. The time is coming that there will be no more Egypt. There may be no more world system that will ever entangle you, chain you, oppress you, afflict you. But you will be set free to enter and usher in into that millennium where God's spirit will take you in. But walk this journey of the Pentecost that God has given you. The journey of Pentecost is of paramount importance. Because without the Pentecost, you will not be able to make it to the end. Hallelujah. Because we all need the Pentecost. All the 120 were filled with the Holy Spirit. It was not only the 12 that were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says all the 120, the first church, were 100% Holy Ghost baptized. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And after which, 3,000 were saved. Exponential growth. 120 became 3,000. 3,000 became 8,000. And the church grew tremendously. And that is the result of Pentecost. Yes. And it is important that we experience a Pentecost today and we walk in a Pentecost till we see an exponential growth in our own lives. We become fruitful in the house of God and win souls everywhere where the Lord has called us to be. Hallelujah. Let's all arise in the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. People of God, you have, may have been going through a difficult time. But let me tell you, my God is a good God, my God is a great God, my God is a mighty God. If He can bring me out from my deathbed, if He can heal my mind and, and change my blood, and if He can give me a new life, He can do the same for you. Your old will be destroyed. On Monday, Priya was sharing the scripture from Isaiah. A beautiful scripture. Anointing will break the yoke. And she was giving the explanation of the, of the word of destroy. In Hebrew, it actually means break the yoke. Means completely destroyed, eradicated. No more mention. No longer that addiction will ever pursue you. No longer that chain will always bind you. No longer that fetter or that yoke will be so heavy on you that you cannot walk up straight or upright. That's what